on a hill far away stood an old Naomba sote tusimame tuweze kupokea mwili wa mwenda zake tusimame sote kwa heshima as we sing it is well with my soul you can continue with it is well with my soul Trumpet to sound. We're all kind of homesick, and we anxiously waiting for the glorious morning when we rise from the ground. So lift your head, we'll repel them. Soon he is coming. We know now the moment when we'll see his face. Fight on, wounded soldier. Hold on a few more days. It will be worth it all. We have been through the fire, but we have not defeated. We have climbed many mountains on our journey to home. Soon the race will be finished and triumph. But we will rise Oh, our day when we meet him In those eastern skies Lift up your head, we're a pilgrim For soon he is coming We know now the moment when we'll see Fire on wounded soldier, hold on a few more days, it will be worth it all when he calls us away. Until we read that land of song, in say as it is done at the end day, in heaven some sweet day, I am going there to stay. Praise all, it won't be very, it won't be long. Fight on, wounded soul.
Mheshimiwa Tongi tafadhali tushauriane hapa mbele. Mheshimiwa Tongi. Na ningeomba wageni wote ambao tuko upande wangu wa kushoto kutoka mahala napotangazia tumejaa sana kule nje. Ikiwa huna shughuli nayo kufanya kuwa hapo, tafadhali tuongozwe kuingia ndani. We have a very big crowd on the left. If you don't have a designated reason of being there, kindly let's move inside kwa sababu ibada ni hapa ndani. Mheshimiwa Tongi tafadhali kama unanipata tushauriane kidogo. Nikizidi kuwakaribisha nyote ambao mmetoka peme mbalimbali za Jamhuri yetu ya Kenya kuja kumlaza baba yetu. Niombe hata wale tumekaa kwenye teras let us maintain our social distance. Mzee Matundura vile vile tafadhali muone Mr. Wanjohi Mzee Matundura kindly naomba uje mahali ambapo natangazia Mzee Matundura kama unanipata tafadhali Hivyo basi nilikuwa naomba wale ambao tuko kwenye teras tukumbushwe kwamba bado tuko kwenye janga la corona hatungependa kuwa na maafa baada ya maziko ya ndugu yetu Mahala ambapo mmeketi kuna vita ambavyo vimepangwa tafadhali tuziviondoe jinsi ambavyo zimewekwa valia barakoa yako vizuri nichunge nami nikuchunge tunaendelea kujiandaa nitarudi kwake uh, Farikei ili aendelee kutubariki kwa muziki ikiwa ni njia moja ya kusherehekea maisha ya baba yetu Mheshimiwa Simon Nyachai wote ambao wamefika karibuni ikiwa kuna wana familia nafasi ya familia ni hapa mbele mkono wangu wa kushoto na viongozi mbalimbali ambao wametunukiwa nyarfa za uongozi vile vile kuna nafasi zenu ili tuweze kumpa buriani baba yetu na kupata nafasi ya kusherehekea maisha aliyoishi fariki aita fadhali Thank you. 
Our Father and our God, we are indeed grateful for such a privilege you have given us to come before you. Thank you for this ceremony of Honorable Rate Simon Yachai. Now we are before your presence. We want to listen to your word as it is spoken to yourself by your servant. Lord, I dedicate the whole congregation which is before us, before you, that your spirit may guide each one of us, that in during this celebration, Lord, all of us, we may behold you, the King of kings, the King of the universe. Speak to us, Lord, and let us listen to your voice now. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. His Excellency, the President, Urumugai Kinyata, and all protocols have served. Good morning, everybody. We want to invite you to church service this morning as we continue with this program to console the demise of our hero. Um, this moment, we wish to begin the program and uh, officiating here, I'll not take time to introduce them, but we have uh, Bishop Mairura is there with us and many more pastors. We have Pastor uh, Henry Nyamwanda, we have Pastor Tom Kennedy, Mienda, and uh, Pastor Paul Kiage, the President of South Kenya Conference, who prayed. And uh, from here, we want uh, the choir of uh, Nyonsia to, to sing one song. Then from there, the program shall continue. And uh, I will invite Pastor thereafter, Tom Kennedy, Mienda, to bring the officiating pastor, and that is uh, after we have uh, had the eulogy from uh, Mike Nyachai. Thank you so much. Let's wait as the choir sings. Oh, yeah. 
to invite uh, Mike Nyachai, who will be reading for us the orgy. Welcome to the body. gathered here to both celebrate and bid farewell to a great man, man of great stature, our loving dad, husband, and Socorro to his grandchildren. He was born a PC, Mweshimiwa, Mze, to many Kenyans, and Omogaka Nyambuche to the Abagusi community. Today, we gather on these grounds where he participated in athletics as a young man. We stand below the Nyanjwa Hill, where he went for his early schooling, on these grounds where his voice boomed as he called for the love and the unity among the Abagusi community and Kenyans at large. His story is long. However, I shall share a synopsis of this story. Simeon Nyachai was born in the month of February 1932 at Nyosia village in the then Nyaribari location, which at that time was both Nyaribari Masaba and Nyaribari Chache constituencies combined. To the late, he was born to the late senior chief Musa Nyandusi Ayako and the late Mama Paulina Nyandusi. He started school at, at Nyaguta sector in 1940 alongside his two elder brothers Solomon Misiani and James Oiruria. 
The school was about 10 kilometers from Nyosia, and to help him walk, to, to help the three of them walk back and forth to school, their father, Chief Nyandusi, got somebody to walk them across and especially assist them to cross the rivers. In 1942, the trio were moved to Nyancho Adventist School near Kisi Town, and they stayed in the home of a relative, the late Chief Joram Getugi, near Nyancho School. From the said home, the three would easily go to school from Monday to Friday. Early Friday afternoon, they would walk the 12 kilometers from Nyanchua back to Nyosia so before the Sabbath uh, so that they could be there for the weekend and the Sabbath and on Sunday morning they would go back to Nyanchua. Later he graduated to Kereri Intermediate School and eventually Kisi Government School which today we know as Kisi High School. While in Kisi High School he became a great sportsman. His triple jump record in Nyanza was not broken for 12 years and was also the schools in the school's team for athletics with a specialty in sprinting and also playing hockey. Upon completion of his studies from Kisi Government School, he applied to Kamagambo Adventist College to train as a teacher. While waiting to join college, Mze taught on a pro bono basis at Kegati Primary School near his home. Later on, he was employed as a revenue clerk at Keumbu District Officer's Office. In 1957, he was jointly sponsored by his father and the African District Council to study public administration at Toki College in the United Kingdom. After returning to Kenya in 1958, he briefly worked as an African Assistant Administrative Officer in Kuala in current Siaya County. But he quit after three months and joined the East African breweries as one of the first black managers. However, his father was not happy with that and he did not want him to, uh, to, to work outside government and therefore arranged for some elders to compel him to return to government. He obeyed and returned to government. He then joined the Jean School, which in present day is called the Kenya Institute of Administration and studied law and public administration. He passed with a distinction. Following this, Honorable Nyachaya was then posted as a district officer, first in Kangundo Division, secondly in, uh, in uh, Machakos Central, and later Makueni. At that time, the division was actually the entire county of Makueni. While in Makueni, he was trained and subsequently served as a first class magistrate in the afternoons. He would give sentences of up to six months in jail for those found uh, guilty. Old men from McQueenie told us back then that he was a very fair magistrate. Once again, he was sent by the government to the United Kingdom for further studies. This time he went to Church Hill College, a constituent college of the University of Cambridge. On returning to Kenya, he was posted to Thompson Falls which is the current day Nyagururu, to be the first African district commissioner of Nyandarwa. This was just before Kenya became a republic. Cabinet Minister Tom Boyer, who was in charge of the Republic Day celebrations, selected him from 41 district commissioners to coordinate the entire arrangements of the Republic Day celebrations. He must have done an impressive job, considered immediately thereafter the head of the public, uh, the public service called him and told him, Mze Kenyatta, the president wants to see you. And as soon as he got there, President Kenyatta appointed him the first provincial commissioner of Nairobi, which was then known as an extra provincial district. Thereafter, he was transferred to Rift Valley and later to Central Province in the same capacity. When he arrived in Nakuru to take over as provincial commissioner, the outgoing PC, Mr. Onyango Josia, was shocked at his age. He was too young. He was only 32 years. He could not understand why the government would send a 32-year-old to be in charge of Kenya's largest province. However, he accepted and he handed over to him. And he began his job as a provincial commissioner. Honorable Nyachai worked as the provincial commissioner 
in Central Province between 1971 and 78. And upon the passing away of our first president, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, he was appointed a permanent secretary in charge of cabinet affairs by the late President Daniel Arap Moy. Some of his highlights in the civil service include the introduction of district focus for rural development. This was a government strategy that sought to involve the people at uh, district level to participate in development based on this, their specific needs. Many people believe that it is the district focus for, de uh, for, for development, for district uh, focus for rural development that evolved into the current devolution system. He also introduced the unique colored vehicle registration plates we see on government vehicles, uh, which uh, belong to government institutions and parastatals and uh, the county governments. This helped to reduce the misuse of government vehicles that did not have GK plates. He eventually retired at the peak of the civil service as the chief secretary and head of the civil service. Honorable Nyachai joined politics in 1992 and served as the member of parliament for Nyaribari Chache for 15 years. During this time as a member of parliament, he donated his entire salary to the constituency's uh, bursary kitty. Through his donation of great cows to his constituents, he started a program for many families to start keeping dairy cows. While he served the people of Nyaribari Chache, each year he would use part of his wheat sale proceeds to purchase medicine for the health centers in the constituency. Honorable Nyachai also served uh, uh, as a minister in the ministries of agriculture, water, roads, energy, and finance. Dad was a shrewd businessman and a farmer. He started off by growing parathenum and, and maize at his farm in Manaret Skim, Sotik. He would personally plow using a tractor from 3 p.m. to 7, while his driver Mwangi, the tractor driver, did the morning shift. Later on, he farmed sugarcane at Songo, which is at the border of Kisumu and Nandi County. He also started farming in Mount Narok and parts of Narok County and became one of the largest wheat farmers in the country. His first business was a tea kiosk, which he co-owned with his cousin Magara Ondera in Nyantrago Market, Kisi, where he also started a portion meal. Around that time, he also started a bakery that would produce 16 loaves of bread for sale, which he did on his bicycle after uh, work. After he left Keumbu at the railway office, he would go and pick the bread, put the, put the bread on his bicycle and sell it. His passion for bakery business grew through the years into factories we see today. In association with business partners later, he started flower milling in Nakuru, Nairobi, Kisumu, Mombasa. He also initiated and did many other businesses like banking, insurance, saw milling, and indeed, one time he had a matatu that was plying the Kisi town, Kebirigo route. He served as a chairman of the Wheat Board of Kenya, the National Cereals and Produce Board, and also sat on the board of the then Egerton uh, College. Honorable Nyachai's family was what kept him motivated. Despite all the government work and business ventures, he always had time for his family. He carefully reviewed and discussed each and every child's report, consulted with teachers, and instilled discipline in all his children. He never spared the rod, nor did he sp uh, spare his belt. He would remove it, and for on any child who was getting off track. But I must confess that it is mostly the boys who got the lashes from the belt. He had a soft spot for the ladies, but he would still reprimand them. Those boys, and it was only boys, a few of them, whom he felt that the crime was a little bit more serious, he would then use his boxing prowess to deal with them. But I'm not naming anybody, so... Honorable Nyachai derived, jo uh, derived uh, joy in supporting any of his children wanting to pursue further education. He was a natural and wise leader of the greater Yandusi family. Mzee regularly sat down with his family and discussed the importance of sticking together 
to aid prosperity. Dad loved country music. He passed this love for country music to all of us without exception. Some of our greatest moments, uh, some of our greatest moments were listening to Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton, Don Williams, Charlie Pride, Nana Musukuri, and Demis Ruzos, among others, in, on a radio cassette as, as dad drove his Mercedes. He drove it at a very high speed usually. He was a very fast driver, and there were no speed guns in, in those days. He loved to drive fast on a good road. In fact, it was not rare for him uh, on occasions. He had a driver called Kenoka whom he had for from the time he was a PC in, in Central all the way until he retired. If they were on a good road and Kenoka was driving slowly, he would ask him, Kenoka, and Kenoka would do the needful. But on a good road. Dad was diagnosed with cancer in 2012. He underwent treatment both locally and abroad. He, brought, he, he, he bravely fought the disease. On Monday, 1st February, at around 2 p.m., he passed on. He was preceded by his parents, Musa and Paulina Nyandusi, our mothers, Esther and Drusira. He has left behind our two mothers, Mother and Grace, many children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Dad, you fought the good fight. Fare thee well, Dad, till we meet again. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mike, for that uh, very uh, good uh, eulogy. Now we invite Pastor Tom Ken Mienda at the Secretary South Kenya Conference to take up the program. I also wish to appreciate the role that the late Honorable Simon Nyachai did to the church of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in South Kenya Conference and in Gusi and across the country also. Maybe we'll do a write-up and uh, give it to Michael so that he can uh, increase uh, the rest of the story that he did not capture in that. But it, all the same, we could not be able, it, no one could be able to write all or everything that he did, but his contribution to even the church was tremendous. To any church, he did not uh, single out that this is the only one he could support. He really had a heart for work, for God's work in this country. I just wish to take this time to bring the one who will be ministering to us, uh, Pastor, retired, John Yamwanda. For a long time, he was a friend to say Simon Nyechai. I wish to bring him so that he can speak to us. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, here present, and uh, all other protocols observed, we wish to welcome you to our final send-off of what Pastor Miyenda said, he said, uh, a good friend of mine. I didn't know that a day will come when I will stand here and uh, say uh, a farewell to such a great man, a hero by all standards, who has served this nation relentlessly for many years. The family of uh, late Honorable Simeon Nyachai uh, we wish to send our heartfelt feelings from down deep in our hearts that this, uh, which looks like a loss, could also be a great moment to reevaluate your lives as you move forward. The mothers, 
sons and daughters, grandchildren. I saw so many people that he has left behind who are very useful to our community. Our program will be running as quickly as we can. After I deliver my sermon, uh, Pastor Lucas will be able to bring us a prayer. Pastor Lucas uh, Jaokov, Nairobi, uh, Nairobi Chapel, where one of our mothers goes to. And then uh, here in our land, we have uh, Bishop uh, Mairura to do the benediction, to bless the people, the family and the people before we leave. And so we'll try to be brief because we understand what's before us. I would have therefore taken a lot of time to read to you the scriptures. Uh, but uh, in the interest of uh, the time we have, you can uh, record in your mind that one of the passages I would have loved to read is Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 simply says, our days are so few and uh, all of us can, ap can appreciate the Bible for its truthfulness that the days we spend on this planet are very few. And they become any fewer when you don't live the whole of your life because of other underlying conditions. But then I'll read to you the New Testament, the first letter of Paul to the church in Corinth, chapter 15. And having been a teacher for some time in the past, I will lovely assign you to read for me our First Corinthians 15, and you do you well to read the whole chapter, but as a minister, we always read uh, uh, just a few lines to bring the life we have at hand home. The first letter of Paul to the dear Christians in Corinth, chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep on in memory what I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after, after that, he was seen of about 500 people at once, of whom great part of remain to that time, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called one of them, because I persecuted the church. May God add his blessing to the reading of the word. Many of us have spoken and have listened very carefully what you are saying about my good friend, late Honorable Simeon Inyachai, and I concur with the tributes you have given to this great son of Kenya, an icon of our people in Gusi, 
a leader in his own right, a man with uh, a brain that uh, goes beyond what you could think, a man who could move uh, strong and straight, whatever the circumstances. He was also brave. But there's one attribute that uh, you, I would like to add, I haven't heard many of you say it, you said he was generous, and I accept that, because he did so much for humanity. Many are people sitting here, and some in the diaspora, enjoyed his generosity. They went all the way to school because of his generous heart. And I remember in this stadium in 1985, when a pastor by the name of... Uh, uh, Stafford proclaimed the gospel in this city. And he was a tall man, six feet tall, weighing 240 pounds. And I was his translator, and you can see my stager when we are standing together. And when 4,000 people had been baptized, it was this great hand of this great leader that uh, organized for us to acquire and put up a church that we now call the Kisi Central Church. Members of Kisi Central Church take time to visit and bless the family of this uh, great man that now sleeps awaiting the resurrection morning. One attribute that I would like you to know why I, con I concurred with him and why we became so close and, and so friendly is that he was an honest man. Hallelujah. I found it nice because I love to be honest. In this country you call the Republic of Kenya, where I have also lived for a while, I think it was to read people on uh, chapter 6 of our constitution. Uh, he will also take a, a good number there. If it's not number one, uh, then uh, I'll find out who they can share number two with. He was such a straightforward, honest man in his work for government, in his business, and all around in the community. We all appreciate his uh, other attributes that we can say he was an honest man. Now, I want to give you a short story. One professor of history in one of the leading universities in the United States of America. He left his office at a time like this. The sun was shining and he was a happy man. He was in good moods and is walking in the corridors of learning, and he met three young people who were studying history, therefore he was their professor. In his jovial mood, he met them just as you can meet your students. He said, young man, how are you today? And they were happy to be greeted by a professor. They stood for a few moments to share a word or two. And the professor said, I would like to part with $100. He wanted to part with some money. And uh, I'm giving it to you on condition that you answer the question that I will pass to you. And then people said, uh, okay, we are ready. You can bring your question. And they did. The professor said, ask them, who is the greatest man in history? I'm giving you a few moments just to meditate upon it. According to you, who is the greatest man in history? The prophet is asking his students. And I'm hearing a whisper here near me saying that Jesus Christ Jesus Christ was not a man, he was God-man. So get the question right. 
when our students get to fail exams, you wonder why. Sometimes they don't get the instructions correctly. I was taking a, a quiz one time in the university, and the teacher had put 13 questions, and he said, I've given you uh, three or four seconds to answer the questions. And I began to answer the questions from 1 to 13 as quickly as I could. When I got the last one, it said, don't write anything on this paper. <laughs> when you see young people coming home and saying, Dad, Mom, I didn't quite make it. Don't beat them so hard. It is difficult even for us to make it sometimes. And then uh, the professor insisted, I want your answer quickly. My money is ready. I'm giving you money. Who is the greatest man in history? There were two American boys and one Jewish boy. And I want you to appreciate the Jewish mind even to this day. The Jewish boy said, sir, I have an answer. Yes, he said, Abraham Lincoln. And those of you who know that name, he was the president of the United States of America that actually liberated those black people who were disadvantaged in every way. And to this day, they remember him. When uh, Barack Obama became president, he said, I'll follow the route, the train route from his place all the way to uh, White House because of the respect the black and the colored gave to that name. And you know, this is an American professor. Be in context. Don't answer questions without laying them on the proper ground. And the Jewish boy said, Abraham Lincoln, and the man put his hand in the pocket, and he said, uh, okay, you will receive a uh, hundred dollars. So he gave him a hundred dollars because he got the question right. Uh, if I knew you had the right question, you could have gotten this one, but now the time is not on our side. <laughs> And then the professor smiled and went his way. Then the, the other boys, the two American boys, asking, you Jewish boys, how did you know the question? Is, uh, the, I mean the answer. He said, uh, I didn't give him the right answer. What? And you have $100 in your pocket. Then what is the right question? He said, uh, the greatest man that he ever lived uh, is Moses. And if you study Moses deeply, as I do sometimes, the Bible says he was the meekest man, the most humble that he ever lived. Numbers 12 will tell you that. He was such humble. He was strong as a leader, yes. He spoke strongly. He commanded Israel. He was their leader for 40 years in the wilderness. And yet, with that leadership, he was a very humble person. Then they said, why did you give a wrong answer? And the Jewish boy said, business is business. When it's time to make money, you give the answers that will give you the money. Why should you on earth give answers which have no money and it's time for business? And I learned something in my university work. Sometimes you have to please the professor to get your A and go your way and life will continue. You know, that's how life is. So the Jewish boy gave a wrong answer. And I'm calling your attention to this service, this hour, that you consider the life of uh, late Honorable Simeon Yechai and your life, more particularly your life, because Mzee is asleep. 
but you, you are conscious, I am conscious, let us together consider our lives and give the right answers to our lives as a nation. As Kenyans, we have many questions to ask. Please, for heaven's sake, give right answers. The Apostle Paul says, moreover, brethren, I want to bring you to the attention that there is this gospel that I have preached you. And Kenya is one country, and you can go around the world, and some of us have done that. Kenya is the only country where everything begins with prayer, and where churches are full on Sabbath and on Sundays. As a matter of fact, even now, as I look out there, to the very back there, we are so many reminding me of this good man sleeping here when he brought up four people and he said, Watu, Wengi. You know, this is what he was, you know, I wish you would be here to see uh, this uh, big crowd. And it's because it's controlled because of COVID. If there was no control, I think uh, this place would be overflowing. This was the man. Consider your life. Paul says, consider the gospel. And the word gospel simply means good news. The Greek word for that is evangelion. And those of us who proclaim this message are evangelists. Evangelion is the word, the, the good news. And then evangelist is the person who is carrying the good news. And I love to carry the good news. And then he says, I received this from the Lord, that Jesus Christ lived in this world. Consider these people. One of your child's family, consider this as well. Jesus lived on this planet. The gospel has got to do with his life on this earth. And at the same time, the gospel has to do with he was buried. And then the gospel has to do he was resurrected on the third day according to the scriptures. And he, he resurrected and the human beings, beginning with Cephas, which is Peter, the other name for Peter, Cephas is Greek also. And then James, the brother of our Lord, who was actually the president of the church in Jerusalem at that time. And then he appeared to other 500 people. And Paul says, this same Jesus appeared to me. And I want to portray the Son of God to you alive today. Having been resurrected, behold his face, and you will see the beauty of his love, the beauty of his mercy, the beauty of his compassion, the beauty of his forgiveness, and forgive one another that we can be able to walk together on the highway to the kingdom of our God, our Father, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I wish to bless you. I wish to tell you God bless you. I wish to say have a nice, uh, nice moment despite the sleep of our great man here. And I appeal to you to accept the man Jesus Christ as your savior now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray as we are seated like this. Our Father who is in heaven, I call upon you this morning to come down to our 
made chapel for the proclamation of the gospel in honor of our elder, Honorable Simeon Nyechai, a man you have used and a man who you gave time to look at his life in his last moments. And in my own thinking, because he knew the gospel, he knew the Bible, he could have whispered, God, forgive me. And you accept forgiveness at whatever moment. God bless his family. The mothers who been left behind, sons and daughters, and the many grandchildren and the great grandchildren, God I bless them, strengthen them, protect them, give them a chance to see beyond the portals of the grave. Lord God, bless our country, bless our president and his uh, uh, cabinet and those who assist him closely, that this land of Kenya may remain a strong Christian country that will attract many to Jesus Christ. And may all of us today, in this very day, consider seriously the man, Jesus Christ. He lived our lives. He died our death. He resurrected our resurrection. We are waiting. soon return in the clouds of glory even so this understanding but shower us with your blessing I pray in Jesus name Amen, Amen. I call upon uh, Pastor Lucas to say a prayer, and thereafter, Pastor Mayrura to say a prayer too, before we hand over the program to the Master of Ceremonies. Pastor, where are you?
So dear family members, therefore, may the Lord reach out to you right now and touch you singularly, but also corporately as a family, that none of you shall be left outside the box. Father, I pray finally for unity to abide in this family. Unity when there are decisions to be made. Unity when they are rejoicing. Unity when they are grieving. When they make a sharp corner of grief cycle that they cannot be able to manage, may you stretch forth your hand and provide that word of unity that we've been spoken of here. May your grace continue to abide with them. So Father, we pray this in the name of God our Father who knows them by name. We pray this in the name of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has delivered them and will continue to deliver them. But we also pray finally in the name of God, the Holy Spirit, our great comforter, the lift of our heads, the one who will never abandon us or forsake us. For this we ask in the mighty name, the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Family, you may take your seats. See, we have a problem because this world is measured out by tall men. <laughs> but I stand here before a great man who is lying here to thank our president. Our president loved him. Our president loves us. And I'm grateful that you are here. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that your deputy is here, Dr. William Ruto. I'm grateful that uh, our former Prime Minister Aguambo is here. Even Ken Rusaka, I see you, and many others. I'm very happy that you have come to honor not only this great man, but to honor the Kishi tribe that produced this man. Before I go to the prayer here, I turn to the family. Charles, I think you have the knowledge and the know-how to put your family together, work together. And I will pray for you. I, I prayed for you this morning in the mass when I prayed for the, the old man. And as I was coming, a small judge for the family. <laughs> So this Eki Aneranda has done wonders, but I leave it there. Now we say the prayer. Mungu Baba Mwenyezi kwa upendo wako, usio na kina, marefu, wala mapana, uliumba simio ni achaye kwa nchaya ya kipeke, yaani, Sura na mfano wako, wewe ulie mkuu daima dawamu. Basi baba mungu wetu. Huyu ndugu, baba na babu yetu, ulie mjalia neema nyingi kwa ubinadamu wake, alipata kukufamu wewe, kukukiri wewe, kukupenda bila tamati na kukuhudumia Bila kufa moyo. Kwa sababu hiyo, hatuna shaka ya kwamba umempokea kwenye utukufu na watakatifu wako. Huyu sasa amemezwa kabisa.
katika huo upendo wako usiopimika ni mshiriki katika himaya yako ya utukufu na utakatifu wako anaheri kuliko sisi hapa duniani katika utukufu wako hana haja za kimwili wala vishawishi na mateso tamaa na kiu ya kukuona wewe muumba wake imetimia sasa anavyokutazama jinsi ulivyo wewe muumba wake basi hapo amepata raha ya milele perfect happiness Kristo mfalme aliyeshinda mauti amemfanya ashiriki ufufuko wake milele tunaomba Kristo mfufuka ampe taji ya maisha ya milele amfanye mrithi mwenza na mshiriki wa utukufu wake sasa humo kwenye lindi la neema ana nafasi nzuri ya kutuombea akianzia familia yake sasa maisha yake yamebadilika bila kupotea kwa mpango wake Mungu muhurumie baba alipoenda kombo katika ubinadamu wake umsamee e bwana tunapokushukuru na kukuabudu wewe uliye mkuu tunajiunga na ayubu tukisema naked i came from my mother's womb naked i will depart the lord gave and the lord has taken away may the name of the lord be praised amen royangu na ikwimbie kinsi wewe uliyomku royangu na ikwimbie kinsi wewe uliyomku may almighty god bless you father the son and the holy spirit amen Now we wish to hand over the podium to Mike Gitone from the President's office who will be the master of ceremony. Kwa kila jambo kuna majira yake kama alivyowapanga Mungu muumba kuna wakati wa kuzaliwa na wakati wa kufa na yote Mwenyezi Mungu ameyaweka mikononi mwake. Tungependa kupata dakika chache kwa ajili ya wale ambao wangependa kutoa tanzia zao kwa kifupi na tutaanza na familia nitawapa dakika mbili kila moja. Nitawa, nitawaita wanne ili waweze kufuatana na sako kwa bako. Nitaomba tuanze na Mrs. Angela Nyachae. Kun, uh, Kunradi na Chache. Asante. Li Nyachae. Mary Nyachae na Ken Nyachae. Nitaomba wafuatane kama nilivyowalika tafadhali. Mrs. Angela Nyachache atafuatwa na Lee Nyachae, Mary Nyachae, Ken Nyachae. Wote wakipata nafasi kwenye jukua dakika mbili mbili kutoa tanzia zao ili tuweze kuendelea na wengine. Karibuni. Good afternoon. If given a chance to talk about my father, I would have very many stories to tell. But I will talk about my father briefly. And I will look at it when we were small children, as Michael said, dad would come home at 4:30. 
that was family time. He would take us for a ride and he would play his beautiful music, which was uh, Kenny Rogers, as he drove us around Nyeri when we were in Nyeri and Nakuru. And dad was always there at supper time, which is a rare thing these days. Dad never missed supper with us. Dad loved our moms equally because as far as I can remember, he took care of all of them equally. And that is very special to children. When a child does not see love towards their mother, they may have a problem with their father. But our father loved our mothers equally. Dad cared about the way we lived. That is, he was our advisor. If there was any problem in the family, he would call all of us and we would participate. And he would listen to our opinion. That was our dad. Dad was also spiritual. One thing people didn't know. Because every, ch every child may remember something special about a parent. And for me, I remember my father that every time we went to visit him, he would not leave that house without a prayer. Christmas time, we would come to Kisi. I liked coming to Kisi on the Christmas Eve. And I would sit with my dad and the discussion we would have with my dad was always biblical. My father knew the Bible inside out. Because most of the time, I was not, some questions he would ask me, who thought I knew my Bible, he seemed to know more. Dad loved one special song. He read me. And also, Amazing Grace. These are the songs which will ring in my mind until that resurrection morning when the trumpet will sound and dad will wake up from the grave and he will be, meet Jesus in the air and even ourselves, we will meet him and I believe our family will rejoice with him. Finally, I want to emphasize how much dad loved his girls. He never treated us differently. In fact, you will get uh, some of our sisters in a row saying, when they went to see dad, he would say, where are my girls? Those girls, please stand up. The girls dad loved. Thank you. Excellency, fellow mourners, this is a tribute to my father, and it goes this way. I can shed tears that dad is gone, or I can try smile because he truly lived. Through the music that he passionately loved and that has been mentioned by my brother and my sister, he would always have those words in our thoughts. As I remember the passion as he did his country or drives up country, his love for speed, his love for beautiful cars. I think, Your Excellency, you admired one or two in your time. Uh, he always made it a joy, and he always gave us that full opportunity. When I think back of the words of Kenny Rogers, the song, The Gambler, a song that Dad loved, yet he was not one, or he was not a gambler. I think Farike maybe will assist me with this. 
there's a stanza. Every grumbler knows the secret to survival Knowing what to throw away, knowing what to keep Cause every hand's a winner and every hand's a loser Best that you can hope for is to die in your sleep Dad had amazing financial discipline and never gambled with anything, but that song was one of his favorite songs. His other love was Mount Narok that we've all been told about. And this was one area that he cherished a lot. And I think a lot of my brothers who remember whenever we had a bad harvest, we would be challenged as to what we were doing for the next season to give support. Our father believed in prayer and would not have a meal, travel abroad, or even go to bed without a prayer with whoever was around. And he made that a virtue for all of us and said that that is how he had been blessed. And if we wanted to be blessed in a similar way, he encouraged us to do the same. To visit with his mom in Sotik was always a joy. And watching him there, even though he was this tough, harsh man, around his mother was always an amazing sight. The last part, and maybe something you've seen in the eulogy, is the way he dressed, sharp, clean-shaven. If you find a picture where you, he is not clean-shaven, then I'll be very surprised. That's who my father was. I'd like to finish off by the last time I had a conversation about uh, a trip I'd done in December, and I was talking about climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. And I saw his eyes light up as he was reminiscing when he did it in the 60s. Obviously, under very harsh conditions in his time, no luxury cabins, nowhere to sit, but all the same, enjoying that moment. I want to leave you with the words of Don Williams and just talk about my best friend, sheltered winds, and for a wonderful person. Thank you very much. Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Dr. William Ruto, Your Excellency, the former Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, all cabinet ministers, and all protocols observed. Good morning, it's still morning. Well, a lot has been said, and I won't say very much because we will just be repeating ourselves as family members because we enjoyed the same, same things all around. We already did a tribute, uh, the girls did a tribute for Dad, which is in your programs, but, but individually I'll just sum up what my dad left with me. Dad, our dad, was a very special man in more ways than can ever be described. He instilled discipline in us and he didn't favor anyone when you misbehaved, whether you were a boy or a girl, and I would like to uh, remind Mike that some of us girls got equal discipline as the boys. 
and uh, his love for music. I am proud to say that I was always the one he asked to go and purchase the music, especially Christmas time. We would drive from, he would give me a driver from Nyeri, and I would go to a shop that was on um, Moy Avenue, Assonance. Some of you from that, our contemporaries <laughs> might remember that. So I would go and make a selection. So we shared love for music, which then even our children today um, have come to love the same music. He taught us to work hard. He taught us to be well groomed all the time. And if you are not groomed, especially if you are going out, even if it was for a drive to Mount Kenya Safari Club during our days in Yeri, he would, you would go back to the house and dress up properly, then he would take us for tea. He taught us to work hard. He taught us to be honest. He taught us that whatever you do, do it as if it was your own work. Even if you are employed as a clerk or whatever job you took, do it like it was your own. And that saddens me today that sometimes uh, I find I found myself in um, positions where, where you're working with people, but they just are so casual because they say, yo si kazi yangu. And I remind them that you are here to do what you have to do and move on. It doesn't have to be your work. One other thing that I may add about his girls and his boys, but every time we all left college and you are ready to go to work, he knew that we all needed transport. And on my 21st birthday, uh, my gift was a car, and every girl here can attest that when they left home, they each got a, a vehicle because you needed to move around. And that was very special. Looking back now, I don't take it for granted because how many of us can give our children cars? We tell them to work hard and buy their own cars. So he was a brave man. He was a very brave man. Whether it was political challenges, and maybe we were running scared or were worried. He would tell us, Apa na ugopa, you live once. He handled every challenge so bravely that with time, we too learned to be brave. He did whatever he did without fear or favor. In our home, he didn't favor anyone. And like my sister Angela has said, I couldn't do that. So times have changed, and maybe as time goes by, we will learn from our fathers that polygamy is not so bad. Growing up in a polygamous home, especially where you have a strong, a strong man, a strong father who treats everybody equally, gives them equal chances, equal opportunities, then you won't go wrong. So because I learned that from my father, not that I, want, I would want that for... <laughs> but it is what it is. <laughs> so one of the bravest moments was when he was very sick and I would go to see him even in his last days in hospital and I wanted to break down. I was weak and he would say, God loves us and God knows what the end result will be. 
So I would get encouraged. So dad, rest in peace, eternal peace, and we'll miss you forever. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President, Uhuru Kenyatta, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Your Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, Raila Molodinga, all protocols observed. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ken, or Kenneth, as in Peter Kenneth, not Kennedy. Now, um, of course, when Mike came here, he talked of uh, my father's boxing skills, and he didn't disclose uh, who suffered. Uh. <laughs> now, I wasn't the only one, but uh, uh, looking back, uh, I think I got the most of it. And uh, when uh, my other brother talked about uh, my father's love for, for nice cars, um, there's a story connected uh, with that nice car and uh, the boxing, which I will explain later before I sit down. The truth of the matter is, um, out, out there, dad was known as a very strict and firm individual, and he was, yes, even at home. But you see, those of you who are out there never see him in a family environment. And even those of us who are on the wrong end of the boxing skills, when you are behaving, things were very smooth. He was a very good dad. I remember Charles, uh, on Tuesdays, when he used to go to, from Nyeri to Nairobi, to the Whitboard, Whitboard uh, meetings, we'll just, we'll just say, come along, and uh, we'll spend a good time in Nairobi having fun while he's in the board meetings. And then, uh, um, uh, like around Christmas, um, I remember we benefited all of us because to look at Nunuliongue at Christmas. Now, and uh, well, before Charles went to the, U to the UK, um, would actually, he would actually get us to get suits, proper suits like the one I'm wearing. But uh, after Charles left, and I didn't do very well in school, Nikambio Sasa to me reduce to Kaunda suit. <laughs> and in those days, Kaunda suits for us who are wearing platforms and uh, flares it just didn't work. Even the girl you are cheating now, she'll even abandon you. <laughs> now, um, let me go straight to the story of, uh, sorry Charles, I may take a little, a little longer, the story of uh, the nice car and, uh, the, uh, and the boxing. Uh, one Christmas after we were, coming, we were coming from Kisi and we had a farm, we have the farm in uh, Sotik, and um, at that time um, there was tarmac on the main, uh, main road along Sotik, but to go into the farm uh, we had to use a Land Rover. So dad had arranged for a Land Rover to come and uh, so that he can park his new, brand new Mercedes, which uh, Mike always reminds me, it was KQB 966. He had parked it on the side of the road and he told me, we can't leave, we can't leave the car alone, so you're going to sit in here. The music was there, Kenny Rogers and uh, Charlie Pride. And uh, now these were the first cars uh, which had central locking, um, which we were also not getting used to, which we were just about, we were getting used to them at that time. And, and he had mentioned, I think, that should you feel you need to step out of the car, remove the key. But for some reason, because I was not thinking about the central locking cars, I thought, let me come out and stretch. As soon as I stepped out, I had click. Gary Li Jifunga. Jifungu Ikondani. Namze and the rest of the family had gone into the farm. Uh, somehow he got information that uh, I have uh, defied what he had said. And the car was, uh, the key was locked inside, and the Mercedes, was brand new Mercedes was on the side of the road. Nobody could help me. Now, he was informed that that had happened. So now, when he was coming from uh, the farm with the Land Rover to the junction, uh, he didn't even wait for the Land Rover to stop. <laughs> As it was slowing down, he already jumped out like uh, the security man I see around the president and deputy. He wasn't driving, so he came out and he came straight for me. Now, I was around from, I think around from four. When, when I was tall, probably I'd even reached his height or a little, a little taller. So, as he's coming for me, and, and I'm trying to look as 
helpless as possible. So he comes for me, then the punches begin. And he was very skilled with those punches. And uh, Muhammad Ali had, ju had just been knocked out by George Foreman uh, a few weeks earlier. And uh, what surprised me is that he even understood this one's of... Uh... I mean, I've always wanted to go up. I've always wanted to go up in life, but not that way. Now, the story doesn't end there, but it's about to end. He said, who you? He can't even keep small instructions. He's not going to ride with us in the Mercedes. Now, that Land Rover uh, had also brought some goats, which we were supposed to go and eat in Nyeri. <laughs> so, Akasema, who you are here, Daniel, here? Now, and, and they should not follow us, because the rest of the family was going to go through Nakuru and uh, have nice food in, uh, I think, Stag's Head. Or, right. So, Akasema, who you? Na driver? Na mbuzi? Direct to Jerry. <laughs> so, I was, at the, I was at the back of the, the Land Rover to Nangaliana and Mbuzi. At the Mbuzi, I think Mbuzi is going to sit on. I am totally Mkubo and I'm finding Yapa Nyuma. Anyway, eventually we were lucky. The farm manager managed to use, I think there was a bit of space on the driver's side, and fortunately. So it clicked, and uh, um, now, uh, and uh, they, I'm sure they went and had very good lunch in Nakuru. Uh, myself, we were going through Nyaururu, I think we stopped somewhere, like Daragua. <laughs> and the, the, drivers, uh, the driver and the bodyguard who I was with, And they were the So I was chewing it in the back of the Land Rover, and the goat was wondering, Anyway, before I sit down, uh, and Charles, <laughs> you're going to have to give me a minute. And I, di I didn't ask if I can read this is uh, from Honorable Beth Mogo, because you might have said no, and I have no one to appeal to, because it's only appeal. I'm a lala apo. Ukikata, aguna mutu ntaendea. Hocha tu ni some arakaraka. This is from uh, Honorable Beth Mogo, who is uh, very close to the family, and the grandmother of my uh, two older daughters. If, I, if you can allow me to read it very quickly. The friendship between Honorable Nyachaya's family and ours dates back very many years. We got to know him when he was a PC, and I called him PC always, even as he, was, as he rose through to higher rank. Because he left an indelible mark as a PC due to his charismatic leadership, with time, we ended up being in-laws and he respectably called us Korera, Korera. that is in-laws in Kisi. We have since remained friends throughout, and we share grandchildren together, that is Mwango, my first daughter, and Wamboi, my second daughter. From that vantage point, we came to understand Mzee Nyachai very well, country with an equal perfection, never tiring to actualize his leadership abilities until his retirement. He has therefore left a rich legacy of commitment and dedication in leadership, as well as excellence in public service. This legacy is worth emulating by the younger generation in order to enrich governance and the, the quality of leadership of our country going forward. We join his family today in celebrating his life during this difficult period, during, sorry, during this difficult period, it is our prayer that God will strengthen the family and give you fortitude to bear the loss. May Mzee's soul rest in the loving arms of the Almighty God. Thank you. Asante. Wataka ofuata ni Moses Nyachae, Chief Nyandusi Nyachae, na Brian Nyandusi. Ntaomba wajonge mbele. Na mkini kubalia let us reduce protocol to make it shorter, reduce the protocol kindly. Nice one. Okay. Um, all protocols observed. Thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to just give a very short tribute. It's impossible to follow my brother Ken with all his uh, stories, so I'm going to try and keep it brief. Um, as everybody has said, um, both in Nairobi and the various tributes that we've received, um, and I'm sure will be forthcoming as, as other speakers uh, give their tributes. Dad was a hardworking man and, and the hardest working man I've ever known. And he's somebody that we, as his children, just aspire to emulate in everything that we do. As much as we emulate his work ethic and his principles, 
we also try and emulate his um, sense of family and family responsibility. And there's just a couple of examples that I can give, which in my mind, sort of in my experience, just sort of captures that. And it's not stuff that you necessarily appreciated when you were young, but you appreciate in, in older age. And um, when I look back at in the early 80s, when, when you know, my brother who follows me, Eric, uh, was starting uh, primary school in Nairobi, when dad had just been uh, uh, moved from uh, Central to be a PS in the office of the president, we had a routine in the morning. We'd wake up and have to be out of the house with dad by 6.40, Mike mentioned earlier. Kenoka was stationed at the office of the president. Kenoka now would take us to uh, St. Mary's, which was our primary school. Do that every day. In the evening, come home, and he was a very, he was a fitness fanatic, so he would always get, uh, want to do his exercises, and at some point, he, he, he took up squash, and used to take uh, us to, to play with uh, one of his uh, uh, family friends. Tuki, when we moved to, uh, to Loresho in the mid 80s, Ali Jenga Kaskoshkot, and his routine in the evenings would be as soon as he's, he, he comes in, he'll atakuliza, Mozu, umemaliza homework. I say, yes, Sasa Badilisha Ngo, Twende to Chese. He'd always want to have that experience of just spending time with, with family in, in whatever way we can. And it was actually great for both of us because we were, we were quite competitive. And it's, it's a very weird feeling sometimes when Uliko Anachaza na your dad, and he's, he's the one who got me into the game, and eventually I was able to outperform him. And it was a very mixed feeling of pride and guilt that I remember going through. Um, but it, those are you know, memories that I, that I cherish. Why am I saying all this? Because the hardworking element was he would go out, work throughout the whole day, come back in the evening, spend time with his family in whatever little routine he'd, he'd get into. And as Angela said, dinner time, family all the time, all day long. Whether he's having a meeting uh, with, with uh, some business colleagues or some uh, you know, politicians or, or people in government, walikuwa nakuja nyumbani. I never, he was never out and about, or, you know, Amanda Kulem Kutano Serena, or what have you. He was always, everyone was at home because dinner time was dinner time. Now, come on again, you want to for dinner, that's fine. But he was at home for dinner with his family. And these are things which you might not necessarily appreciate the importance of, you know, as you're, as you're growing up, but um, it's, it's as you reflect on his life and how you want to conduct your life going forward, those are the things that, uh, you know, uh, are, are my dearest memories. Um, not so dear are when, when things didn't go right, um, and as Mike mentioned, there were a few of us special ones uh, who uh, the, the blows were reserved for. Uh, and Ken, as Ken said, he was not the only one. I can confess I was the other one. <laughs> um, and I too can attest to the, the swiftness of uh, feet and uh, nimbleness and, and just cunning in terms of positioning you into a place of where you just have to submit. So I've, I've, got, I've got stories galore which I could get into, but without, with the wish of not taking up too much time, I just want to conclude by saying that we are grateful for all the love and support that uh, friends and family have shown uh, to dad over the years and in these uh, last few days as we uh, take him on his final journey. Um, it's not something that we take for granted and we're very grateful as I'm sure dad is. Um, we ju I just want to say to, to Dad, who I'm sure is watching over all of us, uh, we know what you were about, Dad, and it was about family unity, and, and as I said in, in my tribute in, in Nairobi, please rest in peace knowing that we'll not let you down. Thank you. Your Excellency, uh, Mr. President, uh, I'm not used to using this. I usually hold it, um, but uh, please bear with me. Uh, Deputy President, Deputy President um, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, former Prime Minister Raila Omolo Odinga, um, 
all cabinet secretaries, leaders in the government, as well as the leaders who are not in the government but lead this wonderful nation. And most of all, the Kenyan citizens who are all here, including those who are watching on TV, we want to thank you sincerely for being here. This morning, I want to represent the grandchildren of Mzee Simeon Yachai, also known um, to us as Sokoro, which is the Abagusi name for grandfather. Can the grandchildren please stand up just so that you can be recognized and appreciated this morning? One of the most beautiful things today is that we all have heard about the fact that we come from a polygamous family, but we all traveled by bus here together as one family. I'm going to be very brief as I just share a tribute on behalf of the grandchildren of Mze Simeon Yachai. New York Times best-selling author and pastor of one of the largest churches in the world. Dr. Rick, Rick Warren said this, the sum of your habits is your character. It is very easy to become a public success and yet end up a private failure. My grandfather was the same person, all of you who have known him and experienced him personally, he was the same man in public and in private. And there are values that he brought home and he kept consistent in his character and his leadership. The one thing that he not only just shared, but he showed because leadership is modeled, not just said. He modeled unity to all of us as grandchildren. And even as we grew up in a polygamous family, we have unequivocally, if that's the word I should use, decided, not just now, but long time ago since we were children, that we will stick together. We will support one another. We will be there through thick and thin. And so today, as the grandchildren of a hero, not just a uh, family, but to Kenyans, we make that commitment that we will carry that on to our children and our grandchildren. And the first thing we will do is lead ourselves because that is the greatest form of leadership. And then number two, lead those who we've been called by God to lead in our areas of influence with all excellence and humility. God bless you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my tribute is based on my experiences from seeing my uncles, aunties, and also interacting with my cousins. We see visionaries as heroes. They have the ability to see into the future and predict with uncanny accuracy what lies there, regardless of the outcome they know. What they know working hard, consistency, passion, like-minded individuals, a realistic mind, and an idealistic heart would help you achieve anything you set your mind to. Sokoro lived his life with an unapologetic persona that amplified the truth he spoke the integrity he breathed, and the ferocity to take life at its own game by conquering it. He accepted people for who they are, but inspired the potential to become something more through a disciplinary cane, figuratively and literally. A heart of gold that no matter, no matter where you are, his unconditional love would reach you, and when you want to see him, it would sip throughout your entire being. The Dangara people of West Africa believe everyone is born with a purpose, and that purpose must be known in order to ensure an integrated life. People ignorant of their thinking are like ships adrift in the hostile area. A person's purpose is embodied in their name, 
thus constituting an inseparable reminder of why the person walks with us in this world. Honorable Simeon Nyachai lived up to his name and set a precedent that a legacy is not only attainable, but living an exemplary life filled with laugh, love, <laughs> laughter, music, family, and spiritual nourishment is a gem to your crown. The greatest storyteller I knew in the written and vocal sense. Thank you. Asante sana. Kwa niaba ya marafiki nitauliza mzee James Mathenge. Ajongee mbele kwa dakika moja. Kisha kwa niaba ya kamati ya wazee the chairman of the council of elders mzee Matundura. Vile vile aje mbele tafadhali. Mzee James Mathenge dakika mbili kwa kifupi tu kisha mwenyekiti wa kamati ya wazee mzee Matundura. Karibu sana. I salute the President of the Republic of Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta, and his deputy, Ruto, the former dep dep deputy, President Raira Ondinga, cabinet ministers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, with my two minutes, I can only take a flight on life of this uh, honorable, this great Kenyan. And that is what I want to do. Um, I knew him, first of all, as just somebody working in the civil service, and we are in provincial administration together, and we're working in different provinces. And uh, when he was brought to uh, Nakuru as a PC, I was posted to him in 1966, uh, Your Excellency, by your father, to assist him to, because of uh, that was a large, it was the largest province. And uh, if, I think your father thought that he had the muscle and the strength to manage such a province, bordering Ethiopia, Sudan, Uganda, Tanzania. And all the provinces except Northeastern province. It was a gigantic province. And that's where, where he became a working mate. They started working together. Soon that developed to friendship. And we ended up by being brothers. And that's the position I stand here. I'm very conscious we don't have time to talk about the uh, Hunyachai because uh, the, the life history has sent it and we have time constrained, I'm very shy to continue from there. One quick one is I knew him very clearly as a family person. He came out and you have seen for yourself. I don't need to add to that. A family person and he gave his family quality time, not left to come. He gave it that. So this acquaintance who becomes a friend, he also became a, a, men a, men a, men a mentor. He mentored those he worked with him, and they are here today, many of them. If they stood there, they will, speak, they will repeat that story. He did that job with the distinction. When he made friends, he kept them because he trained them. He therefore kept them. He did not throw his friends about. And from there, of course, we know Nyachai also. That is the civil service. That is the family. And then we know him as a politician. At least if I remember one great thing about Nyachai is when he told the nation, I'm now changing a career from civil servant to politics. I know what I'm going to find, I'm really aware. Anybody in the professional administration knows what to find in a politics. Um, one thing I will not be trained with is lies. And he lived up to that. I work 
that I'll call the truth the truth. Two is two and three is three, and it cannot be called by other name. And he also lived up to that. So as we mourn Yachai, as we mourn him, and that's what we can't come here to do, as we celebrate the life, that's why we are saying some of the good things he did. I think we should do that with confidence that uh, we lost a good Kenyan, a good husband, a good father, a good grandfather. May God rest him in eternal peace, and may God also keep the family. Charles, you have been commissioned by the church on the first and today, we had you being commissioned that you must face the shoes of Simon Nyachai in leadership of the family. Thank you very much. God bless you. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Nagwate Muliomo Hapa, Huyu Nimatundura, Mwenyakiti wa Parasara Wase Hapa Kisi, Nimefa Hivi, Kwa Heshima Ya Musei Wetu, Papa Wetu, Halikuwa Napenda Utamatuni, Na tuliamua kama kanzo, atuwezi kuja hapa na sire nguo singine, tuje na nguo ya hesima ya mse, na itakuja enderea hivyo hivyo iwe nguo ya mkisi, a traditional dress. Katika barasa letu alikuwa patron, na kwa barasa hilo hilo alikuwa na debut wa wili, Mumocha akiwa honorable Chared Kangwana na fikiri yako hapo nyuma na vile vile Muse Steve Omenge hawa wale walikuwa deputies wake na vile tumekuja hapa leo tumekuja na barasa la watu wengi wengi ambalo the request walifanya wasimame huko wafanye hivi kwa mzee baba wetu baba wetu was musimama hapo popote mulipo parasa nsima musimama bizuri bizuri asanti 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 for waving our uh, papa wetu kabla niseme la mwisho kuna maparasa 17 katika Kenya mzima wali tuma rambi rambi sao kupitia kwangu sitatacha majina lakini na nationally Tuko na National Elders Council ambaye naangoso na Faris Ruitere kwa kisaidiana na Captain Kungu Muigai. Wali niambia ni lete rambi rambi sao kwa familia. Kwa hivu country mzima inausika na mambo haya kupitia maparasa yetu. Ya mwisho, papa wetu huyu ametuwachia a lot of message. Kitu moja alituwachia wakisi wakisi muungane muwe kitu kimoja hiyo alisema akarudia na akarudia tuwe pamoja na tukiwa pamoja tuesimiane na tuesimi majirani wetu hiyo ilikuwa inatoka mdomo wake na ekigo alikuwa na dictionary alikuambia ukweli dictionary yake haikukuwa na neno corruption Nafikiri hiyo hata hakujua maana yake. Corruption. Hiyo hiyo ni kitu alikuwa na kemea kabisa hakutaka hata kujua maana yake ni nini. Na hiyo tuko naye. Kwa hivyo kumalizia tunataka jamii yetu Mungu aisimamie, Mungu ailinde, Mungu awasaidie kwa njia kwa kila njia ile inawezekana. Na parasa letu Wachukue yale yote mzee alituambia tuyatumie tuyaangalie kwa, kwa makini 
tuendelee naye naye itasaidia jamii ya wakisi kabisa nitawachia hapo kwa sababu naona muda ni mfupi lakini natoa shukrani kwa national government vile ilionelea parasa letu bigo na nafasi ndogo ya kusema hata neno moja mbili kwa mzee kwa hivyo tunashukuru kabisa 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 asante nafasi hii nitamwalika mama yetu mama grace nyachai ili naye kwa dakika chache atoe ujumbe wake karibu mama Your Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta Your Excellency the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya former Prime Minister Honorable Raila Odinga I see you as family friend so sometimes it's very difficult even to address you officially because you are family uh, I speak on behalf of myself at the Mama Nyandusi, uh, she was a bit uh, sad and so she has walked out. What our children have said this afternoon, just I cannot repeat because they just confirm what us as mothers know as, uh, about Muse. His love for his children, his love for us. And so I don't want to repeat it. It's also nice to know that when they were being disciplined and being boxed, they took it well in a very, very, you know, in a, in a nice way. For me, studying here is by the grace of God. I didn't know that I would have this strength. But I thank God. It's the support we have received, not only for the last couple of days since Muse left us, but throughout his illness, and particularly the last three years, which have been very, very tough. I just want to say thank you for each one of you. But please allow me to single out His Excellency the President. You may not, because you are very busy, you may not remember. In April 2018, when Muse was in the ICU in Cromwell Hospital, you had a very short time in London, but you came to see him in the ICU. Amazingly, we, after you visited him, he was very excited. I said, like, uh, your visit was medicine to him. Within a week, he was out of that ICU. Thank you very, very, very much. I want also to say thank you. I know it is not my part to pass a vote of thanks, but I would like to say thank you very much the way you have personally committed yourself to give Muse such a befitting farewell. I want to tell you the people you delegated this to, C.S. Matiang is here. And indeed, all the officials of the government, they have done us really great thing. And so we, even as we mourned and as we grieved, we do not have to worry about these other details. We are very, very grateful. Let me say this. I would ask the young men, and not so young, invest in your wives. If you have not invested in your wife, please invest. Muse invested so much, so heavily in me. When we say for better or worse, the better for me was much longer than for us, when it became necessary for me to serve him, I had no reservation. I was ready to look after Muse because over the years he had invested in me, he had loved me so deeply, and for better was so long. And so when it became necessary, I was there available. It's a serious thing because if you don't invest in your wife, when your time of need comes, it's like, Bahari Urikua, Washa Wakuchunge. 
I really thank God for having that opportunity and privilege to look after Muse. And I do believe that Muse left us knowing that we loved him, not only as a wife, but as a family. And uh, for me, even though I was not tired looking after him, I could have given anything to look after Muse and have him a little bit longer. But I believe God, God's plan, as Muse always reminded me, God knows the plan he has for each one of us. And I believe this was the plan. It wasn't, uh, we had seen worse times when he was not well. We were not prepared, we didn't foresee this. But I just want to say I thank God for Mze. I thank him for his life. He lived a good life. When people say that someone lived a good life, he did. And though he struggled towards the end, we, we, still, we should not focus only on the negatives, but we focus on the good things. As I finish, let me say, Mama Nyandus, Mama Charles, has, uh, as she left, she told me to remember what she said yesterday, that her and myself, we are together. We have never had to, to answer each other, and we are not going to do it in the absence of Mze. And so our children, we expect you to get on board. We are not that young, I'm not that young be with us and support us as we move forward, and particularly to keep this legacy of Muse who put us together. Thank you very much. And uh, as I finish, I just, let me say I miss Muse very much, but I know he is definitely in a better place. And one day, as the church say, on that resurrection day, we will be together and live together eternally. May God bless you all. Asante sana nafasi ningependa kumwalika waziri wa masuala ya ndani na mipango ya kitaifa daktari Fred Matiangi atuongoze kwa kipindi kinachosalia karibu waziri Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenyan Defense Forces, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, uh, the Honorable National Leaders who are here, um, I am confronted with a very difficult situation and I am going to be very frank with all of us. As a nation, today we woke up to an interesting day. We are struck by another tragedy. We lost Mze Yusuf Haji yesterday. And the Senate Haji's funeral is at 3 o'clock this afternoon, you know, according to the traditions of the Muslim faith. A good number of our national leaders who are here are also headed that direction. The Speaker of the Senate is here. The Senate is going that direction. His Excellency, our President, is also headed that direction. I'm going to bleed with you, my brothers and sisters, because of the respect and love we have for our Mze. And there's so much to say about that today, that we carry each other's burdens at this point in time. We make some brief remarks so that we can allow His Excellency the Deputy President and His Excellency the President to condole with their family. So at this point, with a lot of challenges, I am going to invite a few national leaders, but before then I will invite our governor to welcome us and speak on behalf of the leaders of GUSI, and introduce his colleagues who are here, fellow elected leaders and other governors, before I call upon a few national leaders to make some brief remarks uh, before I turn it over to His Excellency the Deputy President. Uh, I believe in the circumstances we find ourselves, we will graciously carry each other's burdens. So, my brother, Governor James Ongwai. Uh, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, 
the Right Honorable Prime Minister, all the political leaders present, all the public servants present, my brothers and sisters from, the, from Gusi, both Kisi and Nyamira, and all Kenyans who have come here, we are gathered here to honor our departed son, and I'm standing here on behalf of my chairman of the Council of Governors, Honorable Martin Nyagawambora, who was in charge with, in charge with us in Nairobi. I happen to be his deputy chair, and I'm going to speak on behalf of all the 47 county governments. But before I do that, kindly allow me to do a few introductions. My brother here has talked about uh, the tragedy that this nation has got this morning. So the Kisi leaders present, I hope you do understand about this and we must carry that burden. I will therefore ask all the members of the county assembly present, uh, can you please stand and wave to the family? Whether you are from Kisi or Nyamira, please stand, including your, Senate, uh, your, your speakers, please. Thank you very much. Please be seated. I will ask all the members of parliament that are here, both from Kisi and from outside Kisi, members of parliament, and I mean here I start with National Assembly because parliament is made up of uh, National Assembly and Senate. I start with the National Assembly. The MPs who are here, if you can all stand, please. As you can see, you are very many, and because of time, I would urge you, all of you, to just wave and please sit. Thank you very much, uh, Onyonka, Jimmy, and all of you who are here, who are great friends to Nyachai. I hope you do understand. I would ask the senators present, led by Mze, Professor, Ambassador, Sam Kegengo, Ongeri, to please stand. I thank you very much. If you can please wave. Thank you very much. The governors who are here, Governors, I know that you are about four or five of you who are here. Please stand. I'll, if you allow me very quickly, please allow me to introduce the governors. We have our chair emeritus, the governor for Kakamega, Honorable Weekly Fambesa Oparanya. We have the governor for Nyamira, Honorable Amos Nyaribo. We have the governor for Kakamega, for, for Bungoma, sorry, Honorable Wycliffe Wangambati. We have the governor for Makweni, Honorable Kivuza Kibwana. And we have the governor for the great city of London, of Kisumu, <laughs> Professor Nyang Nyongo. And of course, before I forget, my wife Elizabeth, otherwise I will suffer the fate of uh, what uh, Grace said here. Elizabeth, are you around here? Can you please stand? So that I don't suffer that fate. Uh, Your Excellency, it's very painful for these Kisi leaders because this was their day. But nobody planned that it, uh, what happened to our great man from Northeastern was going to happen this morning. And I do hope that they all understand that, uh, and it's quite a great distance. Your Excellency, allow me to read the speech of the Council of Governors. We thank you all here today. We have come to pay all of us, we have come to pay our last respects to a father figure to many, 
to others a big brother, and to many more a mentor. Mze was a leader who found inspiration in his accomplishments, a civil servant of repute, a political leader who championed the unity of the nation and his people, a successful entrepreneur whose vast, vast business is spread across the country, offering, offering employment to many, most of all a family man whose legacy has been evident here today. Mze was selfless and a nationalist. He saw the transformation of the White Island estates into indigenous lands through a policy that fa favored both the large-scale farmer and the small farmer, actually as a provincial commissioner in the Rift Valley, and also around the same time as the chairman of the Wheat Board of Kenya and of the National Cereals and Produce Board. These policies contributed immensely to Kenya's economic growth, promoting business, agricultural and rural development with far-reaching success to the country. He personified loyalty and worked to support the interests of the presidents he served. Indeed, under the late President Moy's administration, he understood President Moy's desire for better distribution of resources to the regions. As the Chief Secretary, he worked with the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Planning to initiate the District Focus for Rural Development in the mid-80s through the policy, financial authority, and uh, responsibility that was distributed to the District Councils, which, uh, as we all know, the, the, the policy of the District Focus for Rural Development. We take pride that the son of Musa Nyandusi also a powerful colonial chief, set the pace for devolved governance, providing a framework to which our constitution is heavily borrowed. Indeed, in politics, he was known for his famous slogan, for the people who are doing his sana, a saying that displayed his art to accommodate people from all walks of life. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Council of Governors and all the 47 county governments, we are here to give Muse a dignified send-off. We learn and draw inspiration from Simeon Yachai's character, his dedication to public service, and his devotion to family. Allow me to finish my remarks by paraphrasing the words from the Bible in 2 Timothy 4, 7. He has fought the good fight, he has finished the race, and remained faithful. I extend a warm invitation, even with this problem, to all of you to take a moment after the burial to appreciate this land that produced this great son of Kenya, the land of Matoke that embodies the ideals of Mse, which Mze stood for, that of hard work, resilience, and passion. Fare thee well, son of Mze Nyandusi. Thank you, and God bless you all. May you all be blessed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, may I take this opportunity uh, on behalf of Kanu to invite uh, Senator Gideon Moy, the Kanu leader, to make a very brief remarks. Senator, please. His Excellency the President, the Deputy President, the family of Mze Nyachai, my colleagues in the National Assembly at the Senate, I'll be very, very brief. It, is, it was not a must that I speak, but it was a must that I be here. Mze, Mze Nyachai and my father and our family have a long and rich history. So today, when is the day that we are resting, Mze, it's important that we reflect on his life. We've had a, a personal experience with him. He was a man of great character, intelligent man, loyal man, determined man. We will miss him. And he was a loving father. I remember when he used to come home what struck you was his sternness 
I've heard that he was a disciplinarian, that he was, but his intelligence and his quiet intelligence and his loyalty. We will, it's difficult nowadays to find people of that character. But ladies and gentlemen, there is something which I think if we have to, to learn from Ze Nyachai, is that to be successful, to reach the pinnacle of your career in personal and business, you do not have to steal. You do not have to <laughs> cut shortcuts. If you have a doubt, look at his life. He reached the pinnacle by sheer hard work, determination, and intelligence. Simple as that. We salute him. Fare thee well, our great leader, our father. Sante. The Honorable uh, Vice President Stephen Kalonso Msioka. Mr. President, Mr. Deputy President, fellow leaders, and the Nyachai family, Mama Grace, Mama Martha, fellow mourners, like Gideon has just said, I really didn't have to speak, but I had to come. Kore Razangu Wakisi, Mbiamuri, Sasa. Nilisema tulipokuwa Nairobi kwamba huyu mzee alikuwa na roho safi sana. And uh, we miss him. When I first was face to face with Mzee Simeon Nyachai, I just been appointed uh, an assistant minister by Mzee Moi actually on the fool's day, so I thought I was being fooled. And uh, Mr. Nyachai then was the chief secretary, so it's the one who was to swear me in as uh, perhaps the youngest assistant minister. But I didn't know that, uh, Your Excellency, to go to State House, you don't drive pickups there. So I drove myself in a pickup. <laughs> and uh, that is a product of Sekuru. And when I got to State House, after swearing in, I explained to Mr. Nyachai that this is how I came. He took pity on me and actually gave me a lift, I think in his famous Mercedes, that uh, was uh, mentioned earlier on. And I felt completely appreciated. Later on, of course, we had to join together with him in cabinet as a minister for agriculture, very authoritative. And of course, as uh, the chief secretary also at that time, he did quite a lot to uh, create the precursor to devolution, rural uh, strategy, the strategy for rural development. And so we, we honor him and we appreciate that God gave Mze Nyachai to us. But there was also the Christian aspect of Mze Nyachai. Mama Grace, you remember, I'm quite sure people like Sam Owen, if they are not here, they were definitely in Nairobi. That network of friends would just meet and pray for each other. So Mze Nyachai, was a believer, and we thank God for that. Um, I know that David Musila, if he, I would be very surprised if he's not here because we didn't speak before he came. And, and I know that uh, him, that type of was his. When there are great difficulties facing individuals like us, it was people like David Musila, Mze Nyachai would sit and give us comfort. Therefore, I hope Mama Gracie will not forget to prepare the famous banana cake at four o'clock. We will keep on coming. And uh, it is Lee Nyachai who has uh, always was my, my guide to, to that family. And so as we mourn even the Yusufaji, we celebrate merit, meritorious leaders like the Yusufaji, the Simeon Nyachai. I will not talk politics, but Brother Raila will remember. 10 o'clock in the morning, out of Serena, we signed with Mze Nyachai uh, the coalition agreement before NAC. 
that was uh, senior council Paul Muite, the late Kiliku, and Mzee Nyachai. In the afternoon, um, we all know what happened, uh, Kibaki Tosha, <laughs> and then, and then, Kikaumana. <laughs> Kilipaumana, nothing, nothing can, can clear from our image the fact that we are here to bury a real patriot, a national leader. May God rest his soul in eternal peace. Uh, the Honorable Musalia Mudavadi. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, the Deputy President, William Ruto, the Nyachai family, my friend Raila Odinga, and indeed the friends of Nyachai. Mine will be very brief. First of all, let me also take this opportunity to, as we condole Muse Nyachai, to also convey my sincere condolences to the Haji family. A few days ago in the church, I said this month of February seems to be a menace in our society. I did indicate that Nyachai passed away on the 1st of February. His friend Mzee Moi died on the 4th of February. His other friend Mudavadi died on the 7th of February. And I said I hope February does not take anybody else. Little did we know that Haji would also follow. But who was Nyachai? A great public servant. He was a chief secretary, but he never proclaimed himself as the chief secretary. You felt it. You just felt it. Kuna watu wengine katika Kenya hii, he must remind you mimi ni waziri, mimi ni governor, mimi ni PC, mimi ni nani. But this guy, he just moved and you felt it. In fact, the other day I said, this is a fellow whom ministers even called Sir. And it was rumored that when he was chief secretary and he called a PC or permanent secretary, even though he's not in that room with the PS or the PC, it is rumored that the PC would stand to speak to him on phone because he was not sure whether he's watching him. This was the man called Nyachai. Finally, he held his head high. He knew how to hold secrets. He knew how to keep the integrity of the public service. The integrity of the public service. He did symbolize the integrity and sanctity of the public service, which is the civil service. This is Simeon Nyachai. My final parting word is that when I was Minister for Finance and I was Minister for Agriculture, I commissioned the Price Waterhouse Audit Report on the notorious Golden Bag scandal in this country. In that report, there were damning issues. But before I could present it to His Excellency the President, he actually told me, go and share it with Simeon Nyachai. So I went to Simeon Nyachai's house, Mama Grace's house, and we went through that document. After that, I knew I had an ally. And when we went to cabinet, the decision to close the windows and the Vichorochoros of Goldenberg was made. This man contributed immensely to the well-being of Kenya. May his soul rest in eternal peace. <laughs> to the Abogusi, you gave us a good son. To the Grace and the Nyachai family, you lend us a very good patriotic father and Kenyan citizen. To the people of Kenya, we have lost 
in particularly the civil service fraternity, you have lost a great compatriot. To Kenya, we have lost a great son. Mungu our Linda Nyinyote, Asante Lee. Your Excellency, with uh, humility, may I invite uh, former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, uh, to make his remarks. The family of uh, our friend Mze Nechai, Excellency the President, all protocols observed, Abagusi Mbuyamuri, Amijambo Yote, as I said in the church the other time, we have come to mourn a great Kenyan. Simunyachai, by all accounts, and everything that has been said about him, was a great Kenyan and a great human being. I explained that at a time, the relationship between the late Musa Nyandusi's family and the family of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. We are family. And I've explained how I first came to Nyosia in 1954, when I was a small boy, the home of the late Paramount Chief Musa Nyandusi. He was a great friend of Jaramogi, and therefore we are a family. I have had occasion to have long discussions with Simon, Simeon, together with our late friend, late Joe Bomino. And through those discussions, we shared a lot with Nyachai. Nyachai is somebody who schooled in the tradition of the British Civil Service, which basically promotes excellency and uh, uh, correctness in service of the people. He served at a time when there was a transition from the colonial system of administration that we had inherited to ours. And that was the time when some of you may know the Ndegwa Commission report had been published, which was allowed civil servants to be engaged in business, private business. So whatever Nyachai did, at that time it was fairly legal because it was allowed by the, the, the government at that time. It was, it was not any kind of corrupt practice. Civil servants were officially allowed to engage in private practice, uh, private businesses. But apart from that, Nyachai excelled as an administrator and eventually as um, uh, uh, in, this, in, in the main civil service, as a permanent secretary, and finally as a cabinet minister. And as a cabinet minister, of course, a lot has been said already about him. Then when he resigned as a minister of finance, we were now with him in the back benches. And then when eventually we formed the Rainbow Coalition, the, 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 the Rainbow Alliance, he had already started four people. Then we came together. Four people and LDP, which had formed, and formed the National Rainbow, no, Rainbow Coalition. And the Rainbow Coalition then teamed up with NAK of uh, Maya Kibaki, Malwa Kijana, and Terry Tingilu to form the National Rainbow Coalition, NAC. As Kalonzo has said, but lengthy negotiations at Sereno Hotel, Curtis Calonzo, who was then Minister for Tourism, although he had resigned. And then I put the question, we want to come out of this meeting with one candidate. 
because Kanu was at Kasarani and knew that we were going to come out with Uhuru Kenyatta as a candidate. <laughs> so I told him, let us agree that we can only have one candidate. So as they announced the candidate there, we also announced our here at Uhuru Park. Nobody was willing to budge. I said, I'm pulling out myself. Who follows me? Nobody was ready to follow me. <laughs> and that's why when we went to Huru Park and I had the last word, I said, Sikibaki Tosha. Of course, it did not go down well with my, my, my brother. But we later on discussed it. And I told him, you know, it was just going to be you and me. And it was not going to work because others were not going to come with us. And we became friends again. Eventually, we served in the same cabinet with Simon when he came in as, as a minister, first minister for energy, in the, the same uh, government. And we were working very closely together. I remember there's one time when I had a, a problem. We had this road called Kisi Chemosid Road, which had not been constructed for a long time. Every election time, a contractor would be appointed. When elections are over, it would be withdrawn. So when I came as Minister for Roads, I put my PS, no, my Chief Engineer Roads, the late Barnabas Ariga. And I told him, we appoint a contractor and I receive a progress report on a monthly basis. And it was done and completed. The branch to Nyamira Town. When I came to Nyamira Town, the people told me, we have a tarmac in to town. But for us to go to the provincial headquarters, you have to go all the way through Kisi, around the Yugis, back to Kisumu. Yet from here to center, just about 20 kilometers. So then I went to the cabinet memo to the cabinets, because the contractor had agreed to maintain the same rates to do the 20 kilometers, Nyamira to center. Then when uh, I presented this, it was opposed by other seven ministers. But Nyachai stood by me and said, you, Mr. Mr. President, it is always possible, it is always done in government. So long as the contractor agrees to maintain the same uh, uh, rates, it is price is going to be cheaper than if you have to go and uh, re-advertise again. Kibaki had a lot of uh, respect for Nyachai. So he said, sour, sour. That's how I was given a go ahead to do Nyamira to center. May the good, I, today it's not politics, but I can say BBI. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I suggest we're coming to the end. I'm soon going to hand it over to His Excellency the Deputy President. But the Speaker of the Senate is here, Honorable Ken Lusaka. I would request you kindly for one minute. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, former Prime Minister, distinguished mourners, Abagusina Abakwani and Buyamre Mwens, Mudenoma Gogo, Mimi, Nimekuja Hapa Mwishmua Rais, Familia, Kulia Mzenya Chai. Kwa sababu hapa ndiyo nilianzia safari yangu ya kuwa dio kule keumbu. Nilikuwa dio wakati wa mzee nyachae. He had just come from the public service. Na watu kutuiti ye vizuri sana. Lakini siku moja nikaambiwa, despite all that, kwamba President Moya ilikuwa nakuja breakfast kwake. Nikaona vitu viche njanga, vitu imebadilika. <laughs> Nikaenda kwake, haka nambia young man, I know, haukuwa wewe. I was a deal and I know where this was coming from. Kwa hivyo wewe fanya kazi yako ni mekusamea, but one thing that I want to advise you, kwamba in public service ukiwa deal, respect your seniors, and you will go far. You can see where I have reached. I'm now the speaker of the Senate, courtesy of the advice I got from the late Mr. Simon Nyachai. For the people, family kama wakina Mike, Charles, we work together very well. May Mr. rest in peace. Thank you.
Uh, now, Your Excellency, we have come to the end of this phase of the program before I invite the Deputy President because as a matter of protocol, when His Excellency the President speaks, uh, no one will speak after that. I would like to, I would like to welcome uh, Charles Nyachai to speak on behalf of the family and move a photo of thanks before I invite the Deputy President to welcome the President. Charles. Your Excellency the President, Your Excellency the Deputy President, Your Excellency the Honorable Prime Minister, Viongozi Wote Ambai Mumefika Apa Siku Ya Leo, Wale Wote Mumekuja Kutu Fariji, Nakuwa Nasi Wakati Tunasindikisha Mzewetu Kwa Safari Hii Ya Mwisho, Naomba ni wasalimie kwanza hamjambo Mintombi ya mwere Bia mwono kakina andenda Abasabe asa masikanya manene Asa masikanya manene Tuwari wancha Toge ndene programu yebunere Wari mwale ukuwa nantupa iguete Lakini tuwanchiri Eki aira ni mayete na aneko batebinde muna Omwaka wa anchete na ilu na mwa mwosigete. Kamura anche? Tika toko ole programu ye ase nchira ya masikani. Your Excellency, before I move a vote of thanks, allow me in just a few minutes to read a personal tribute to Dad. Dad, it is time to say goodbye. But then again, because we are people of faith, it is not a final goodbye. We believe that we shall be reunited before God's throne on that resurrection morning. Like the Apostle Paul in his second letter to Timothy, you have finished the race, you have fought the good fight, and you have kept the faith and what a life it has been. I thank God for having given you to me as my father. From you, I have learned much. You taught us by example to accord respect and dignity to everybody, irrespective of their socioeconomic status. Courage has been one of your greatest virtues. You always courageously stood for what you believed in, even against all odds. I recall when I was chairperson of the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution, many times doing my job properly required rubbing the establishment the wrong way. When this happened, and depending on the perspective of the person speaking, people would say he is courageous like his father. Or they would say, who you anakichangumu kama babayaki. Either way, I was proud to be associated to that virtue of yours. Dad, again by example, you taught us generosity. You always reminded us to acknowledge God's blessings, and you, in turn, shared those blessings widely. Time without number, I have met people who I didn't know previously, and they have said to me, Without your father, I would not be what I am today. 
There is so much more that, that I learned from you, values and virtues. I observed throughout my life and which I, and I am sure my siblings, will endeavor to emulate. Dad, in your last few years, you have struggled stoically with a deteriorating health situation. For me, it has been painful and traumatic to watch my strong, active, and independent father lose his strength, become largely inactive, and also become dependent. Even after the over two years, even after over two years, it remained a major challenge for me to mentally reconcile with the sight of you on a wheelchair, your mobility severely compromised. Though this situation, through this situation, however, God in his infinite goodness provided a unique opportunity for you and I. In that period, we had the opportunity to talk on a one-to-one -one many times. In these conversations, you told me many things. Indeed, you poured your heart out to me in a manner I would not previously have thought possible. I felt you speak to me, not just as your eldest son, but as a close and trusted friend. I will forever cherish that opportunity and experience. There are things that you shared with me that I will take to the grave with me. Many other things that you shared will be of immense assistance to me as your son going forward. Dad, as we lay you to rest today, I want to promise you that I will do my part towards your family remaining as you had built it and as you would like it to remain. God chose to call you home on my birthday. I believe that in the fullness of time, he will reveal to me the significance of that. For the rest of my life, I will celebrate you and your life as I mark the birth that you gave to me. On that, your last day on earth, a few hours before you gave up the spirit, I stood beside your hospital bed with my wife Jane and we prayed. I spoke to you and I said, Dad, whatever happens, it shall be well. Well now, Dad, it is well. Tata, it is well. Thank you. Let me begin the vote of thanks by acknowledging and thanking all the medical personnel that attended to dad throughout the period that he has been unwell. In the UK, Dr. Stephen Manga and the set of doctors and hospital staff uh, looked after dad and we are grateful to them. In Nairobi, Dr. Robert Mathenge, together with his team of doctors and together also with the management and staff of the Nairobi Hospital, we want to appreciate them for all that they have done for Dad right up to the minute that he rested uh, within the Nairobi Hospital. We want to thank and appreciate the nurses and caregivers, both within the hospitals and at home, and those provided by Pinnacle, who have been with Dad for the last couple of years. 
So all the medical personnel, I may not have mentioned you in person, but please accept our appreciation. Your Excellency the President, as a family, we thank you and we appreciate you. You have, from the time that dad rested, you have been greatly concerned. You gave instructions for us to receive support, which we have received from the government of Kenya. And I want, as I thank you, I want to, pray, uh, to appreciate my brother, who is also your cabinet secretary, the Honorable uh, Dr. Fred Matiangi, to whom you gave instructions, and who has carried out these instructions and ensured that we have received all that we have received from the state. We want to thank you very much, Your Excellency. <laughs> having said that, Your Excellency, and having addressed you in that capacity of my president, allow me also to now address you as my brother. Because I want on behalf of our family to appreciate your family through you. The reason I do this is because right up to the last minute, Dad never tired of telling us what the late President Jomo Kenyatta had done for him, how the late President was actually a mentor and a father to him, how he held his hand on so many issues, some of which, Your Excellency, I shared with you when you came to visit uh, at home uh, last week. So without going into too many details, I want to request that the uh, uh, Kenyatta family, and particularly uh, your mother, Her Excellency Mamangina Kenyatta, who dad also regarded as a mother, that you pass on our appreciation and we trust that as families, what our parents started, we shall continue. Your Excellency, the Deputy President, I want to thank you and appreciate you as a friend of our family. You have your own uh, history, Namze, and you came home to condole with us. And I want to thank you for your moral support and the personal uh, material support that we have uh, received from you. Thank you, sir, for your friendship. Because I cannot speak or address every single leader, I want to appreciate on behalf of our family all the leaders here present and those who have not been able to come today. Those who worked with dad, like uh, uh, the Speaker of the Senate and others, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister has uh, referred to how they worked in the uh, political uh, environment. Uh, the Honorable Musali Davadi, the Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, and there are many, many people who worked with Dad. I want you to accept our thanks and appreciation as if I gave it to you individually. Thank you to all those leaders who, from the time that dad rested, who have come home to condole with us. Thank you very much to the Gusi leaders, His Excellency the Governor of Kisi, Omoaka, Professor uh, Ungeri, my Senator, my Member of Parliament, the Honorable Richard Tongi, and Basically, all the Gusi members of parliament and all those leaders, we want you to know that we thank you and we appreciate you 
for all the support that you have given us since uh, this happened. We want to acknowledge and say our thanks to all the religious leaders. Some are here, some may not be here, who, first of all, have been dad's friends over a period of time. Secondly, they have visited and prayed while dad was unwell, but was still alive. And thirdly, those who have visited and condoled with us since dad's pa passing. Um, again, forgive me if I don't remember all of them, but I want to refer particularly to the entire leadership of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, who have, uh, as I say, been with us when dad was unwell, and also since he rested. I want to thank you very much. Your Grace, the Bishop of Kisi, I want to thank you for your prayers, for your support, and I know that among the people who are hurting most for the loss of dad because he was your personal friend, I know Niwewe Baba Askov. Nakushukuru sana. Other leaders that uh, came and condoled with us, and I want to acknowledge them, uh, Bishop uh, Oscar of the Nairobi Chap Chapel, Pastor Jaoko, who is here, uh, and uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, Bishop Kefa Omai, uh, Pastor Ayonga Robert, and my friend Father Omugunda, all of whom came to condole with us, and all other religious leaders who may not, I may not have mentioned. Dad's friends, there are too many for me to refer to. One or two of them have been up here, and I trust they will understand that they were not all able to speak. Mze uh, James Mavenge, Mze Mwishmiwa, Senator David Msila, Mr. John Simba. Now, Wengi Sana, those are just representatives of Muse's friends. We want to thank you, uh, uh, Bill Mayaka, and many others. I better not start trying to name them. Thank you, and thank you again for your friendship to Dad, and thank you for rising to the occasion to be with us and to condole with us since uh, this happened. I have been speaking on behalf of our family to those that I have mentioned. I want to now, as children of my late father, I want to address our mothers. And I want to address them in appreciating them. My mother, I think, has stepped out, but Mungina uh, Grace is here on behalf of them. I want, on behalf of us, your children, to thank you very much for having looked after Mze, first of all, all these years. Because it is because our mothers looked after dad and gave him an easy environment that he was able to bring us up. He was able to, that family time that was referred to, was able to be a, a positive energy. And because of our mothers, we were able, despite us being a polygamous setup, we were able to be brought up as one family. So, I appreciate our mothers. Mongina Grace, let me appreciate you in a very specific way for the last three years that you have looked after dad. It was a full-time job. It was a difficult job. With all his virtues, and there were many, even when his health was good, 
Dad was not an easy person to deal with. So you can imagine he was, he was already not an easy person and when he's well, that is a virtue. You can now imagine when he is unwell, frustrated. So, Omongina, you have done an excellent job. We appreciate you. And I'm sure Dad, wherever he is, appreciates you. Nikienda Komaliza. Sorry. Finally, and most importantly, we want to appreciate God Almighty. The God that has given my father the 89 years short of five days that he lived, the God that has given my father the successes that he has had, whether in public life, whether in family life, and the God who has called him home now, and in whom we trust that dad is in his hands. We want to appreciate, we want to thank God. CS, it's okay. But as I go to sit, <coughs> except my my voice in the end of the door, I am determined to tell the answer. I'm okay. My children to tell the answer. Now to call the mere moya nyasa ere. Now to kwane amanga na amaya. Emere muge koera na togende igoro Ga korange ya marieta nimbeo Ga korange ya marieta Ga korange ya marieta Ga korange Um, finally, the leader of majority in the Senate and the leader of majority in the National Assembly, the Honorable Senator Pogisho and the Honorable Kimunya here, please if you could kindly stand up and wave. Thank you. About Minto, we had a good plan. We had planned how Honorable Richard Tongi was going to speak, the Member of Parliament for Nyariba Richarche, on behalf of all members of Parliament. How Mwaka Ito, Professor Sam Mongeri, was going to speak on behalf of the Senators, Nabaraka Bonsbagu, in public leadership. How Mongena Janet was going to speak to us. Lakini Wono, Twensi Otuanyo Oranga, Tuasoira Bokongubu, Sengen Jumo Gambi, Wikagende. No, Nyaninje, because of that, Tindu Jugo Kwana, your Excellency, the Deputy President. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, the Honorable Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, Mama Martha and Mama Grace, and the entire family of Mze Simon Nyachai, Your Graces, the Bishop and Pastors present, all my colleague leaders, Na watu wote wakisi Abantu bami nto mbu ya more Mbu ya more na ende 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 
kwanza naleta rambi rambi za familia yangu na watoto kwa familia ya mzee baba wetu Simon Yachai and as we mourn the departure of mzee Nyachae we equally celebrate a great patriotic Kenyan a consummate administrator and public servant an astute businessman a brave and courageous politician and a loving, strict, but also forgiving father and father figure. Despite the differences in age between me and Zenia Chai, as Charles has said, we had a relationship. And Michael, when he read Mzee's eulogy, he mentioned that Mzee was a very strict person. And occasionally, he took out the cane and uh, straightened people. Michael did not mention the list of people who became either victims or beneficiaries <laughs> of Mzee Nyachaya's cane because he ran the risk of including me in that list. <laughs> and I think it's a, an appropriate moment for a confession that apart from the blows and the other measures that were meted on his immediate family, those of us he found in politics, he also did not spare us. He made sure that we walked the straight and the narrow. I remember very well in Yamarambe. <laughs> Omingo Magara and myself misbehaved. And uh, Michael did not say because he is actually the person Mzee Nyachae sent to go and collect the cane. <laughs> Na hapo tulipata kuadhibiwa. But I also say Mzee Nyachae was loving and forgiving. I remember subsequently we looked for him, Omingo and myself and he was very gracious. He did not tell us to go to the office. He asked us to go home. And Mama Grace here is a witness. And we went and asked for forgiveness from Ze, and he was a gracious mentor and father. <laughs> Subsequently, I remember again we went, and Grace was again our host as we went to see Mzee Nyachai with President Uhuru Kenyatta. That time in 2013, 2012, we had many problems. And Mzee Nyachai gave us worthy counsel. And he encouraged us as a father figure. That is despite the fact that we hadn't supported him when he ran for president, but we, when he ran for president, but when we went to seek for his counsel and support, he graciously agreed to support President Uhuru Kenyatta. And we are eternally grateful to him and to his family. Finally, as Mzee Nyachai rests, he speaks to us, and he speaks to us loudly. Looking at his life, 
he had the option of waiting to share what his father Mze Nyandusi had. But he chose a different route. That instead of waiting to share what was there, he decided to create more. And that is why, with a humble portion mill, with a small bakery, he built a huge business empire that not only created opportunity, it created wealth and it created jobs. And that is the lesson that Mze Nyachai in this casket is giving to us as the people of Kenya that yes, we can wait to share, but it's much more important if we roll up our sleeves, tighten up our belts, pull up our socks, and create. Without further ado, it's now my very humble duty to request His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, to come and make his remarks. Your Excellency, sir. Asante ni sana kwa heshima na uliza tuketi. Mama Martha, Mama Grace, jamii yote ya marehemu mzee wetu Simeon ya chai wa wa hapa na Charles viongozi na waombolezaji wote ambao wamefika mimi niko hapa kwanza kama rais kutoa rambi rambi zangu na kutoa rambi rambi kwa familia kwa niaba ya mamilioni ya wakenya ambao hawange kuwa pamoja nasi sisi wote hapa kwa familia ya mwenda zake mzee wetu baba yetu Simeon ya chai ya pili niko hapa kibinafsi kwa niaba yangu na kwa niaba ya familia yangu kuungana pamoja na familia ya mzee Nyachai kuomboleza pamoja na wao na kuambia ya kwamba muko katika maombi yetu kama marafiki kama jamii ambazo zimekuwa pamoja poleni kwa niaba yangu poleni kwa niaba ya familia yangu na mpokee hizo rambi rambi kutoka kwetu la tatu tuko hapa kuungana pamoja na familia na wakenya wote kusherehekea maisha ya huyu mzee ambaye amelala hapa mbele yetu mzee ambaye amejitolea kwa hali na mali kutoka utoto wake mpaka kwa uzee mpaka akashindwa kwa sababu ya ugonjwa lakini akajitolea kufanyia taifa lake kazi na ni mengi ambayo tuko naye katika taifa letu leo ambalo tukiangalia nyuma tuliletewa 
kwa sababu ya juhudi ya huyu mzee ambaye amelala hapa tuamshukuru na hatuwezi tumsahau mimi kwangu mzee tumejuana miaka mingi kutoka kutoka utoto wangu na mashauri mengi yamenipatia mpaka pahali ambapo nimefika siwezi nikasahau na nataka niwaambie jamii ya kwamba hata tukiendelea mbele vile mzee amenishika mkono mimi pia niko tayari kuwashika mkono tuendelee safari hii pamoja nanyi he was a disciplined man and i liked the person mzee ambaye ametukumbusha the most important thing he was an honest man and a man of dignity and without doubt he was a disciplinarian but not only in disciplining others but the discipline within which he carried himself what he expected of others is what he expected from himself so it's not that he was out there saying wewe fanya what he was saying you do is what how he lived his own life and i think that is a very important message to take home that we were not here to talk about somebody who used to talk at people and do the opposite no what he told us to do he himself did and that is the manner in which he lived his life kwa hivyo siku ya leo mimi sio siku ya kunena ni siku ya kumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa maisha ya huyu mzee. Ni siku ya kushirikiana na familia, kuomboleza pamoja, kusimama pamoja nanyi na kuambia ya kwamba mko katika maombi yetu na tutaendelea kushirikiana kwa mambo yote ambaye yatakuwa mbele yetu mbele ya nisome kwa sababu ningependa tu kusoma kidogo hapa kuna kitu kimoja tu leo nimejifahamisha na ni vizuri niseme kwa sababu hata kama na juana sana sana na vijana wake wote haswa wale ya marika yangu kuna moja wakati tulikuwa vijana tulikuwa tunatembea tembea huko na huku naitwa Ken ako hapa <laughs> na nilikuwa najiuliza siku hizo tukiwa vijana huyu mtu mkienda pahali sasa mambo iwe moto kidogo huko anachemuka haraka haraka akishindwa na ya kusema ngumi zimekunjwa tayari lakini sasa najua hiyo mambo ilitokea wapi ni zile hapa ka tulikuwa unagonga gongwa nyumbani ndio 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 ulikuwa unakuja kujaribu kutuletea sasa nimejua <laughs> eh nimejua <laughs> eh lakini sasa tumetulia tumezeeka jameni tumezeeka so fellow mourners it is with immense grief and deep sense of personal sadness that i learned of the death of mzee simeon yachai and in this moment of great loss and sorrow my family and I convey our deepest condolences and words of encouragement to the family, relatives and friends of the late Mzenya Chai. As we join all of you in mourning the passing of Mzenya Chai, we also join you in celebrating his accomplishments. The Honorable Mzenya Chai was a great son of Kenya whose immeasurable contributions to the nation spanned many decades and inspired millions of Kenyans. In the passing of the Honorable Nyachai, we are all deprived of his leadership, great passion, determination, and energy towards serving our country. And even in death, Muzei Nyachai undoubtedly stands tall amongst dedicated patriots of this country. 
His service to Kenya was char characterized by utmost integrity, rare zeal, unbridled commitment to duty, and a passionate candor that earned him accolades in three successive administrations. Mzee Nyachai was a remarkable leader who motivated all those around him to be honorable, decisive, and accountable to the people they serve. Mzee served the people of Kenya with diligence and devotion in different capacities, including that of cabinet minister, chief secretary, legis legislator of consequence, prominent businessman. And Kenya is undoubtedly better off for having had Mzee Nyachai and his legacy is fundamentally entwined with the peace, prosperity, and democracy that all Kenyans enjoy today. At a personal level, I vividly recall many interactions with the late Mzee Nyachai over the many years. Interactions with him as an elder, a mentor, a counselor, and a friend. Mzee Nyachai always had a word of wisdom, advice, and encouragement for me, and his impact on my life shall never be lost, just as his vision of this country shall never be forgotten. Therefore, as we mourn the loss of this great son of Kenya, we pray tribute to his legacy, which I trust will be carried on for generations to come. Titans of history like the late Mzee Nyachai only die a physical death, for in their legacy and the millions of lives they have made better, they enjoy immortality of the soul. Muzenya Nyachai will live on forever in our hearts, our minds, and memories, and in the history of a nation that is eternally grateful for his exemplary service. In his memory, and in consultation with the leadership of Kisi County, and to fortify our appreciation of this great son of Kenya, as a government, we have considered it fit to rename this stadium the Simeon Yachai Stadium Kisi. And to ensure that this stadium is completed by the end of this year and to an international standard, we will allocate an additional Kenya shillings 150 million to the county government of Kisi to have this stadium complete. Further, we have decided at Nyantagru Stadium. Yeah, you. Ambapo pia mzee nyachai hapo walitoka hapo. We have decided that in order to give the sons and daughters of the Gusi community an opportunity to tap their sports potential as we heard of the late mzee nyachai, Today, I also direct the Cabinet Secretary for Sports, Culture, and Heritage to embark immediately on the development of a sports academy at Nyantrago Stadium, Ambayo Sasa Itaitwa Nyantika Mayoro Sports Academy. Uh, Tujaribu tumaliza mbele ya niende nyumbani. So ladies and gentlemen, may I conclude by saying as Christians, let us take solace from the word of God in Psalm 73, 26, which says, my flesh, my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. We pray the Almighty God rest the soul of this great man in eternal peace. Asante ni sana, mungu wa wabareki.
Asante sana. Baada ya hotuba na ujumbe wa Rambi Rambi kutoka kwa Mheshimiwa Rais na viongozi wote, ningependa kuomba sote tuwe watulivu na wale wanatoka ndani ya hema tunyamaze na tutulie ili tuweze kuelekezwa. Kutoka hapa familia watakuwa na mazishi ya faraga, private barrio kwa sababu hatuwezi sote tukatoshea kule nyumbani. Kwa hivyo wanasema tuseme asanti wewe ambao ulifika na umekuwa pamoja nasi. Baada ya maombi ya mwisho tutaelekezwa na kanisa kisha mwili watafuata familia na mheshimiwa rais na viongozi wengine watafuata. Asante ni sana na rejesha kwa kanisa. Thank you so much. Because the family of Nenyachais loved music, singing church hymnals, as you saw Charles being a chorister, we'll have a brief song from Panamahali Pazuri Mno, and then we'll have a closing prayer from Pastor Sibia, who is the head of women in, in the country of Kenya. Shall we all rise for that song? Uh, one stanza. Panama hali pazurim no. Let's sing. Panama hali pazurim no. Tua pa ona kwambali sasam. Baba yetu angoja pale. Ame panga maka o yetu. Kitambo tubado. Tutakuta na ngambo pale Kitambo tubado Tutakuta na ngambo pale Is uh, the final journey of the late Simeon Nyachae, the member of parliament for Nyaribari Chache then from 1992 to 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 or for 10 years um zenye chai amekuwa ama ameombolezwa kama kiongozi ambaye amekuwa katika mstari wa mbele kuhudumia taifa katika nyadhifa mbalimbali zikiwemo kuwa waziri wa kilimo waziri wa kawi waziri wa fedha pamoja na ku kuungana na taifa katika kutekeleza majukumu mbalimbali ambazo aliweza kupatiwa na serikali uh, uh, Simeon Yachai amekuwa katika uh, siasa kuanzia mwaka 1992 uh, na kabla hapo aliweza kuwa katika uh, ama katika huduma ya uh, katika sekta umma uh, Rais Uru Kenyatta amemwomboleza Nyachai kama kiongozi ambaye ali uh, ama ambaye ali za kuonyesha ukakamavu katika kazi yake uh, kiongozi wa ODM Raila Odinga vile vile akitoa uh, historia ya jinsi walivyoshirikiana pamoja na Simeon Nyachai mwenda zake katika Be with us now and forever amen amen Familia tafadhali tukaribie kwenye jeneza ili tuweze kutoa nje Niombe waombolezaji wale wengine wote tuwe watulivu tafadhali naomba tuumpe mzee heshima klaji tuende chini apatashika na wafuasi wa Simeon Nyachae katika uwanja wa Nyanturago na baadaye waliweza kumuomba msamaha Simeon Nyachae mwanda zake na mambo yakaweza kunyoshwa tu na sasa anazo ama inayoendelea ni kwamba familia inajiandaa kuweza kupeleka mwili huu hadi katika eneo la Nyaosia uh, kwa mazishi ama safari ya mwisho kabisa na ikumbuke kwamba Rais Uhuru Kenyatta ameweza kutoa tunuku katika uh, eneo hili na kubadilisha jina ya uwanja ambao tu, amba, tuliko hivi sasa ya Gusii iwe inaitwa uwanja wa Simeon Nyachae county ya Kisii na kutoa kitita 
kiwanja cha milioni shilingi au ama shilingi milioni 150 ili kufanikisha ujenzi wa uwanja huu. Kwa hivyo ni hayo tu tulionayo kwa sasa tunazidi kuendelea uh, na na yote ambayo yanazidi kuchipuka hapa na kwa niaba ya kikosi kizima cha Runonga ya Citizen ambacho kiliweza kufanikisha matangazo haya kutoka kaunti ya Kisii uh, tunawatakia familia ya mwanda zake Heri na Fanaka wanapomzika mpendo wao mimi ni Steven Leto kutoka uwanja wa Simeon Nyachae kaunti ya Kisii hata baada ya mwili na familia kuondoka tafadhali tumpe hiyo in 2012 has served as he has served in the senate of kenya since 2013 until his death he will be remembered for his peacekeeping efforts amongst warring communities now president uhuru kenyatta has eulogized the late haji as a dependable kenyan leader and a patriot that is the saddest message that kenyans are waking up to especially residents of garissa